we're gonna be exploring the deepest depths of Dead by Daylight, and I guarantee you there's gonna be something in here you don't know. For those that aren't aware of this concept, an iceberg video starts up here, with the most common pieces of knowledge that most new players will be exposed to, and it goes down to the more obscure, weirder space, down to what I like to call the basement of the sea. For this, I've taken inspiration from other icebergs the community has made up, and through my own experiences and research. So let's get started right at the top. Boop the snoot. This refers to pig and how survivors like to give her a little pet on the nose with a pointing emote. Basement Bubba's are Bubba players that stay in the basement. They either hide there until someone goes down there, or they bring someone down and then hide. That way, if more people come down, it's easy for Bubba to take advantage of that and just down them all. DVD Mobile is, as you can guess, the mobile version of Dead by Daylight. Because it's handheld, there's quite a bit that's different about it, from leveling up and getting add-ons to just the gameplay alone. It also has different mores. Also, it's free to play, so Obviously, it has a lot of really, really, really nice skins. Stranger Things removal. Behavior couldn't renew their license with Netflix to keep the Stranger Things DLC. That meant that all the content, the map, the killer, the survivors, and cosmetics, all of that was pulled back so it can't be purchased now. All the character perks were renamed and made base kit perks for any character to unlock. Anybody who bought the DLC beforehand gets to still use the characters though. The Fog Whisperers program is a partner program for Dead by Daylight's top content creators. There's no application process for this as Behavior themselves seek out new members that that use the hashtag into the fog on Twitch and YouTube. Members get chapter codes to give away to viewers, in-game currency, and can even get information on upcoming content to reveal to their communities. Shirt My Survivor. During the last week of each month, the DVD team goes through Twitch to find affiliates or partners that are exemplary content creators. This hashtag is to get their attention and refers to a streamer being selected and receiving a Twitch shirt for a survivor and a Twitch charm for killers. Pretty good job so far. Refers to an interview that Matthew Cote did where when asked about Dead by Daylight's development, he said, I think we did a pretty good job so far. The community took issue with this statement because the game at the time was often riddled with bugs and issues, but as time progressed and the game actually got better, Kote has thrown this line out as a joke. I think we've done a pretty good job so far. I love this team and I love the work, the skill, the passion that has gone into it. I love this game. And if someone was to ask me again the same question, I do believe I would tell them again, I think we've done a pretty good job so far. God palettes. These are pallets that are around an area that makes looping the killer so much easier, such as at Shack. It's often frowned upon to drop these pallets early on in the game because the killer will just destroy it, and then that area won't be as effective against them later on. Nia is the entity. Sometimes, as a meme, Nia is referred to as the entity or a killer because she used to look very, very, very not friendly looking and emotionless. Fangs Cosmetics. It's no secret that it's a popularity contest with survivors. The ones that players use the most are the ones that get the best cosmetics. And then the ones that get the best cosmetics are the ones that players use the most. And it's just one whole big cycle that's personified as Fang. With every single event, it's practically a given that she's going to get a new skin, even getting cosplay outfits when it's another character's event. Like with Jill and Cheryl, chat sensor. In 2021, a chat sensor was added that kind of confused everyone. It was very sensitive and would sometimes be a gamble whether or not your perfectly normal and appropriate sentence would be replaced with... It would even censor GG and the names of killers, survivors, and perks. All while toxic people still found ways around it to say things that the censor should have detected. Many have stated that this censor doesn't make any sense and that it shouldn't be as sensitive as it is, considering that Dead by Daylight is an M-rated game. I've actually made a Mimi video about this, so if you want to learn more... <clears throat> Custom icons. On PC, players can actually change what perks and character portraits look like. This is done with the icon toolbox application, where you select the icons you want and it changes the game files to that. Moonwalking is a maneuver that lets the survivor walk backwards and it's usually done to show off. Hooked on You is the dating simulator game featuring a few killers from the main game. If this is your first time hearing this, I promise you that this is real. Maurice. Formerly located around Clown's area on Father Campbell's chapel map, Maurice was a horse that became a favorite among the community. He was burned and blinded when entering the realm, so the entity gave him a third eye to make up for it. Then one day, he just mysteriously disappeared and wouldn't make another appearance until the dredge was released. The dredge is made up of the dark thoughts and body parts of a cult, so unfortunately for Maurice, he um... Behavior made a lost horse post on Twitter, so hopefully we'll be getting more info on what exactly happened to him. 
So while I was working on this video, they brought Maurice back into the game. And not only that, they gave the Dredge a new skin and it's uh... Pride Charm Light. Using the flashlight on the Pride Flag Charm turns the light into a rainbow light. PTB Changes. The public test build is where PC players can play upcoming content early. As the name implies, its purpose is for the developers to see how the community reacts to that new content. That way, they can tweak it upon launch. That's not restricted to gameplay mechanics and stuff like that though. They have changed the chase music of Killers before and even changed out Kate's voice because, well... Shirtless Myers is a thirst meme that was started when this image was posted on Reddit, instantly becoming a hit. Matthew Cote even joked about adding Pantsless Myers as a cosmetic. Blendet is a nickname for Claudettes that like to wear dark clothing to better hide from killers. Moon Bouquets were offerings that changed how intense a moonlight was for the match. It was eventually removed because the developers wanted more control over the lighting they decided for each map to ensure a better experience for everyone. Splinters were offerings that let players try out a DLC killer before buying them. They just wouldn't have any perks or add-ons though. The Sanctum of Wrath statues are always staring at you. When you move away and move the camera so they're out of your sight and then look back at them again, there they are. Space Billy Program. Space Billy refers to Billy players that were able to use his chainsaw rush to get to places no one should have been able to get to. As of now, this is no longer possible to do. Midwitch's Secret Room. On Midwitch, the clock tower opens up to reveal a hidden room with a chest inside. This room only opens if you repair two specific generators in a specific order. You would need to repair the generator in the chemistry lab, followed by repairing the generator in the music room. Once that's completed and the endgame collapse begins, the room opens up. Otto Stamper is a notable unseen character in the lore because he's involved with two seemingly separate killers. He first appeared on the doctor's lore, where he was his mentor until the doctor turned Otto into one of his experiments. Before that, Otto was the leader of a cult where he put fear and dark thoughts in the minds of his followers, causing them to violently destroy each other. Those fears, dark thoughts, and body parts manifested into the dredge. I also have videos on their lore. And for a lot of other killers, go check that out. Hellraiser NFT. After the Hellraiser chapter release, Behavior announced a collaboration with Boss Protocol to make the Hellraiser DLC models into NFTs. Players embraced this collab with open arms and... Wait, no that's not right. Ah, there we go. I got the right script. This sparked understandable outrage because one, it's NFTs. <laughs> And two, no one knew exactly what this meant for Dead by Daylight. Was this just the start? Are more NFT elements going to be added later on? People were review bombing the DLC page because this news came out a month after the DLC did. So they were upset because they wouldn't have bought it if they had known it would be connected with NFTs. Another concern was if the game would even be allowed on Steam anymore. This is because Valve, not long before this controversy, put out a statement saying that NFTs are not allowed on their platform. Behavior then clarified that NFTs are in no way going to be in the game itself and no content will be hidden behind an NFT paywall. Their statement also hinted that when they got the rights to Hellraiser, the license owners still have complete control over what they can do with those models because they 100% own those characters. Behavior potentially had no idea these assets would be made into NFTs. That means they would have been kind of contractually obligated to make that NFT announcement because the alternative was that the whole Hellraiser chapter would be completely scrapped. Sadako's intro. Seven days after after buying the Sadako Rising DLC, a special intro plays when you open up the game. It's a remake of the original clips that play on Sadako's VHS, but with Dead by Daylight characters. The Seven Days is a reference to the fact that in the movie, whoever watches Sadako's VHS tape will die in seven days. DBD is Ringu 3. Behavior couldn't get the likeness rights of the actors that played the protagonist in the first Ringu, so instead they used Yoichi Asakawa, who was a child in the two movies and was the sole survivor of Sadako's curse. They aged him up and made him a scientist, like his father. More specifically, he studied the sea and coast because that's where Sadako might be. So with all of that, his involvement in DVD can be considered a sequel to the Ringu movies. Blackface Bubba Bubba used to be able to collect the faces of the original survivors after killing them 25 times. These cosmetics, however, were removed because of Bubba wearing Claudette's face. It wasn't removed due to him quite literally wearing a blackface, because Bubba doesn't see color and kills everyone equally. Rather, 
it was removed because that specific cosmetic was used to specifically harass and all around be toxic to players that were using black characters. There was a backlash to this because this was after the incredibly sensitive chat filter was implemented. Players believed that behavior wasn't doing enough to deal with toxic players and that the removal of these cosmetics was more performative than it was effective. Spirit and Oni Spirit is a descendant of Oni. In his lore, his rage made him famous. That warrior rage was passed down and activated in Spirit's tome, where his roar can be heard right before that rage takes over against her bullies. Special outfit sounds. Certain outfits for survivors and killers add sound effects to them. Huntress's Baba Yaga skin takes it a step further and actually changes her lullaby. Ghostface's chase music. Ghostface technically has had six total different chase themes so far. Before the most recent theme, he had one that sounded like this. Yeah, that got changed a bit a few weeks later. The volume was lowered while they worked on a new version that came out the week after. And then that one was changed one more time the following week to what it is now. Jiggle physics. It's kind of obvious that certain survivors have jiggle physics, but so does Clown's belly, and so does Oni's attack on Titan skin from a, a certain angle. Clown intoxication cursor. When intoxicated, the screen of the survivor is all dizzy and wobbly. There's a small crosshair in the middle and that's there to prevent motion sickness since it's something stationary that the player can focus on. Auto Haven Bodies. There are body parts in crushed cars on these maps because Wraith's job involved crushing cars. However, he didn't know that pretty much every single car he crushed had a body, dead or alive, inside of it. It was a service that his boss offered for sketchy clients. Deathslinger's Gun Wipe. Deathslinger wipes blood away from his gun in a specific way. He moves it out so that death to Bayshore is visible. Bayshore being his former boss that screwed him over by selling his patents. Legacy Skins. Players were given exclusive entity touch skins as a reward for prestiging their character before patch 1.3 in late 2016, a patch that made the grind much easier. These skins can't be earned in-game anymore and will never return. The $350,000 streamer tournament. Dead by Daylight had a tournament with some big name streamers for $350,000. Let me say that again, $350,000. The majority of these streamers have never touched the game before that event, and it is not an easy game to get into. As we all know, there are so many mechanics and abilities and strategies to learn, and it also didn't help that there were strict rules in place for this. There's so many rules to this game, and I don't know what the rules are in the tournament. The whole thing was just a recipe for turmoil. As the streamers spent a good chunk of that time complaining about the game in front of thousands of potential new players. I know a Dead I by Daylight coach, if you about. want one, I, I <laughs> am never going to play this game again. So I was, me. So. Someone literally... The Observer is the narrator of all the tome entries. He's trapped in a tower in a sub-realm that's hidden from the entity. He's trapped there because he had an interest in Celestials after seeing a world get destroyed, which caused him to discover the entity. As a result, he was banished to the tower for disobeying a group known as the Council. While trapped, he carried on the traditions of the tower and makes observations of the entity's realm. He holds an Oris device that allows him to find memories and stories of those who are in the fog. And that's how we get the tome entries. Benedict Baker, is an unseen character that's responsible for giving us a good chunk of the first-hand lore reportings that we've seen. He intentionally sought out the Entity's realm and was devoted to finding it and figuring out how it works. Ever since then, he's been stuck in the trials just like the rest of the survivors. In his journal, he writes about his encounters with other survivors, killers, and just about anything else that's in the Entity's realm. Lore Contradictions Dead by Daylight's lore has quite a bit of inconsistencies for its characters. More specifically, between a character's launch lore and and the tome lore they may get, not to mention the quotes their add-ons have. Wesker's sunglasses. When stunning Wesker, there's a chance his glasses will fall off. If that happens, he just grabs another pair from his coat. Danny Johnson is the original killer behind the game's ghost face mask. Behavior didn't get the rights to the Scream license, but they did get the rights to use the ghost face mask. That's because the Scream franchise actually used an existing general mask for the movies. So the copyright was split between the franchise and the mask. Despite that, Ghostface still wipes the knife the same way he wipes it in the movies. The Entity's Favorite Ghostface is the Entity's favorite because he actively enjoys being in the realm. The way he patiently and meticulously stalks his victims makes 
makes the entity feel good, I guess. Also, his straps float due to his connections with the entity. Jill's knife. Jill has a knife on her that she doesn't or can't use to fight back against the killers. Resident Evil Safe Room. On the Raccoon City Police Station map, whenever you enter a room that was considered a safe room in Resident Evil 2, the safe room melody plays. Vigo is an inventor that studies the entity, who potentially created the hatch as it is known that the entity didn't make it. He also went into the void, a limbo-esque realm where the entity discards broken hopeless survivors when they're no fun anymore. He managed to escape using putrid serum. He and Blight are the only ones to have ever escaped from the void. Some survivors also have skins revolved around Vigo. Pyramid Head's tongue can be found in the game's files. The reason isn't clear, but Behavior probably tried to implement it since he does use it in Silent Hill 2. Stretch resolution. You used to be able to stretch the game resolution out, resulting in people being able to see around corners much better, thus giving themselves an advantage. This would actually also get Ghostface out of his stock, even if he wasn't being directly stared at. Basement walls. There are lights shining in through the basement's walls, which is notable because it's a basement, it's underground. So what's shining through? It's theorized that this is actually a manifestation of the entity since it glows like other entity related things. The basement has a special connection with the entity so it could be that the boundaries of the realm are weakened down there, letting the entity slip through the cracks. Doctor's Origins During development, the doctor was originally called Mu Yi, and his add-on seemed to be Chinese-themed. This has led to speculation that his original inspiration was from Yang Yangxin, an infamous Chinese therapy doctor. He's specifically controversial for using electroconvulsive therapy on kids to cure them of internet and video game addictions. This would have made sense considering that the doctor was released alongside Feng, an alcoholic pro gamer that was down on her luck. If this was indeed the case, the doctor was likely changed because his inspiration is still alive. Graphic updates. Dead by Daylight has been out for a while and has only gotten more popular, so it makes sense for them to give the game a glow up here and there, both for maps and characters. Just compare launch footage to current gameplay. Pinhead steals survivors. This refers to how his Mori is the only Mori that doesn't kill the survivor. Instead, they're chained up and sent to hell. Trapper vs. Entity Trapper resisted the Entity and didn't want to be its pawn, so he was tortured and punished with hooks embedded into him. Ghostface's phone Ghostface's Mori in the PTB originally had a flip phone instead of a camera. This kinda didn't make sense considering flip phones didn't have front cameras. I mean, at least I don't think they do. I, I don't know, I'm a zoomer. Yui's Hachimaki Yui wears a pink Hachimaki in every single one of her skins, even the Attack on Titan one. Hachimakis are usually worn as a sign of effort or courage, and in Yui's case specifically, her first was given to her by her supportive grandfather as a good luck charm, but that one got stolen by a stalker that landed her in the hospital. So the one she has now was given to her by her gang, with their signatures and good luck messages written on it. It became her gang's symbol of unity and support for women needing help from stalkers and abusers. Spaghetti code is a phrase used to describe source code that's unstructured and difficult to maintain, such as Dead by Daylights. It used to be a lot worse because new updates would have ripple effects that would bring unforeseen bugs and glitches to other aspects of the game. This issue is probably because the devs never expected the game to get this big. It was probably fine for being a small indie game, but as it grew and grew, the code gets even messier and even more tangled. Huntress Bombs On release, Huntress had a sound issue where her hatchets were just a bit too loud. Myers saved DBD. It's been said by people who have been playing DBD from the early days that Myers kinda saved the game, or at the very least launched it to where it is now. The fact that Behavior was able to get such a huge license of an iconic horror character so early on in their game's life shot up its popularity and opened up so many doors for collaborations in the future. Meg in Resident Evil DLC trailers. In the first Resident Evil DLC trailer, Meg is injured and presumed dead by Leon. However, in the trailer for the second Resident an evil DLC, she seems to have been saved by Rebecca. Dredge's head. Because of Dredge's unique shape and how killers' bodies are split into three parts for cosmetic reasons, what we consider Dredge's head is technically its body piece. The left appendage is considered its leg piece and the right appendage, which is the weapon, is considered the cosmetic head piece. Dimitri. Coldwind Farm has a tree with hanging animals and its name is Dimitri. The meat tree. Gerald is an abomination of nature that used to occur when a very specific set of steps were followed to create this cosmetic glitch. Charlotte was pregnant. The original idea for the twins was supposed to be a mother and her unborn son. It was changed because... yeah. 
Getting outside of the map. Ever since the game's launch, people have been trying to leave it. By that I mean finding ways to glitch out of the map, whether on purpose or not. The most common way is being able to move around beyond the exit. Hag Cannon refers to a now patched glitch that launched survivors up when they fell onto a hag trap. It also worked when jumping onto one of the husks. Ace's Money On Ace's Mean Street skin, he has a wad of money in his pocket. Looking at the money closely reveals that his face is right on it. Localized translations. There have been many complaints from native speakers about how the game's translations aren't exactly the best, and there have been many online campaigns begging for their language to be updated. Myers and Pyramid Head versus the Entity. There's a theory that Myers and Pyramid Head are more powerful than the Entity and are the ones that could defeat it. Myers is the shape of evil, and therefore he's practically immortal. He doesn't have a conscience or desires or aspirations, he just has an instinct for evil. Pyramid Head is similar in a way since he's fixated on dispensing punishment through pain. They both also have their own mores in their kit, signifying how they could disobey the entity's rules. However, skeptics point out that in the lore, Pyramid Head and the entity made an agreement for him to stay in the realm. He wasn't taken, he was invited. Lori was being taken and Myers ended up following her into the entity's realm. He didn't resist because it's where a killer like him does what he does best. Entity took the box. Is the theory that the entity brought the lament configuration into the realm so someone could solve it and therefore summon Pinhead. This makes a bit of sense since it'd be a lot easier to do this instead of just taking Pinhead considering he is kinda powerful. The White Eyes Theory tries to explain why some killers have white glowing eyes. It's theorized that the entity is making these killers see survivors differently to motivate them to kill. Deathslinger sees everyone who's wronged him. Spirit sees her father, who chopped her and her mother up. Wraith sees those that burned his village down and slaughtered his people. Spirit wasn't supposed to be taken. This is a theory that the entity is the one that made Spirit's dad snap in order for him to slice up his wife and daughter so that the entity could take him. However, in that moment, the entity saw the potential in Spirit's overwhelming anger and took her instead at the last second. The entity made the artist. Crows are a big part of the artist's lore, but here's the thing. Crows aren't native to where she's from in Chile. That detail has led to speculation that the entity is the one that sent them there and made her life outlandishly difficult. This would explain how her life is just one tragic event after another. The entity needed her to suffer to become a better killer and after she accidentally killed her friends, she was ready to be taken. Pyramid Head and Michaela. In Michaela's trailer, on her wall is a poster of Pyramid Head. Meg and Claudette race swap. In the game's alpha, Meg and Claudette look quite a bit different than how we know them today. Blonde Meg. On release, Meg was actually blonde. Meg is in Resident Evil 8. When walking around the castle, you could hear this familiar scream in the background. <laughs> Climbing was an unused mechanic that was removed when the game was a prototype. It would have let survivors climb walls to get away from the killer. A bit of this idea still exists in the game, as killer shacks have holes on the roofs. The teacher was a scrap killer that had an educational theme. The speculation for their existence came from a July 2016 update where these three files were added into the game. It's speculated that this could have just been a red herring from the developers as they had recently announced that they were working on the first ever chapter DLC. The killer for it turned out to be nurse and those files were just never used for anything. The Smasher was a scrap killer whose power was, well, to smash. He was able to destroy absolutely everything in a level. Trees, walls, buildings, everything. He was removed because he would be too difficult to really balance if he could just destroy the whole place. Scrapped Maps There was actually a good chunk of progress on a map on the Blackwater Swamp Realm that had a focus on sewer pipes. This led to speculation that Pennywise would be coming to DBD since a part of his aesthetic is sewers. Sadako was supposed to get a map with her release that was similar to Coldwind Farms. However, the idea didn't go anywhere because they realized that the map was too similar to Coldwind Farms. Pinhead was also considered to get a map with his release, but didn't because the map would have had too much sexuality. Naked models. Certain character models have underwear underneath that sometimes even clip through clothes while others, uh, don't have anything underneath. Hold on, before you tab out to look that up, please wait until the end of the video to do it. This is all to make designing cosmetics for them easier, so pretty much everyone in the game technically has a nude model. 
the entity is a plant, or at the very least, plant-like enough. This theory comes from the fact that the entity is infected and weakened by blight once every year around Halloween. This is pretty much the only thing that's been proven to hurt the entity. What's significant about this is that blight is actually a real sickness found in plants that rots them away. DVD save files. DVD save files used to be on your computer, meaning if something happened to those files, then good luck. This was an issue with people who had earned legacy skins and couldn't get them back, so they instead received 10 million blood points. On that note, for a certain period of time, you could actually, in four steps, go into those save files and change the amount of blood points you have. Plague's left eye. In her default outfit, Plague's left eye is hidden and rotting away. That's why this eye isn't animated and won't blink, even in outfits where that eye is exposed. Body pillows. In Dead by Daylight's official store, there used to be a Huntress body pillow that you could buy. As of this video, there are still body pillows available, but for the Hooked on You game, Ghostface Hatchet. There used to be a hacker that played as Ghostface and would float around the map and teleport all while throwing hatches at people. Killer Power Swaps In December of 2016, there was an exploitable glitch in the menu system that let killers swap powers, and even use survivor perks. This led to some interesting combos, like Chainsaw Myers running Bond. Not only that, but survivors could also use that same glitch to get a killer's power, with the most useful one being Wraiths, since they could just become invisible. On top of that, a killer could accidentally drop their power and would have to go find it and pick it up to use it again. The icing on the cake here is that the developers were on break that December so it didn't get patched until January 12th. Fences aren't canon. In Legion's trailer, Frank is running alongside David on the Mount Ormond Resort, and you can clearly see the fences that are in the game aren't in that trailer. Golden toolboxes are easter eggs that are hidden around in every single realm. They can't be picked up or interacted with though. They're really only there as a nice little surprise for people to find. The Entity's music. The Entity could be heard spitting bars in Legion's fuming mixtape chase music. Wraith and Nurse. On a dev stream, a behavior developer mentioned that Wraith and Nurse had a thing. This is backed by them having matching Valentine's Day skins, referencing the Phantom of the Opera. On those skins, Nurse's heart is missing because it's on Wraith's weapon. That weapon is called the Heart of Miss Swanson. Pizza Emperor Dwight Benedict Baker wrote about an alternate version of Dwight that went by the name Emperor Dwight. Sir Regal Dwight in a thicklish purple robe and golden crown E steps out into the courtyard and greets all the peasants with good words and pizza. Lost licenses. Nothing about this is confirmed, but it's been speculated that Behavior has had new license deals in the past that just fell through for one reason or another. We can only go off of leaks and speculation for this, but an example of this I've actually heard before is that Behavior lost the Pennywise and IT chapter license because of a falling out with Warner Brothers, who are notorious for keeping their IPs on a short leash. Blighted skins are in the future. These skins are implied to happen later on in the character's lore because it's like a rebirth after Blight experiment on them. Trapper has more hooks in his shoulder than before. Instead of one, Clown has two rings of human fingers. Legion are all truly one. Oni has real demon horns. Him and Spirit receive a real third eye. It's also kind of funny that Wesker was very down to get blighted, because of course he is. Googling DVD art. If you look up DVD art on Google, one of the first images is uh... Archie McMillan's fathers. This is one of the more out there observations, but the joke theory is that Trapper's father is the love child of Mr. Rogers and Richard Nixon, because he looks similar, I guess, and, and wears comfy sweaters. The Entity's Foot Fetish Someone out there, for some reason, just had to point out that a lot of female killers were barefoot or had skins that made them barefoot, at least compared to the male killers. Third Way to Escape Long ago, the devs mentioned that there has been a third way to escape a trial that's been in the game and has yet to be discovered. The ideas floating around are that it has to do with golden toolboxes, or maybe the basement, or maybe the fence could be climbed, or maybe there's a specific sequence of events that have to happen in a match. However, with how long 
the game has been out and the thousands and thousands of people that have played over the years, alongside all the people that have peeked into the game files, it seems that the most realistic thing here is that the devs were just doing a little trolling. Everything is canon. According to the DVD lore, the entity deals with the multiverse and that's how licenses from fictional universes find their way there. It's also how there could be trials with multiple versions of the same survivor. The Observer mentions reading different stories of the Trapper, with them all being the same with slight differences. This means that every skin is canon, every match is canon. What's interesting about this is how Freddy and Myers exist as horror icons in the Stranger Things world. So imagine being Steve and Nancy, getting thrown into this realm that's already pretty spooky and then seeing the actual faces of horror. The player is the entity, or at least an extension of it. The player chooses which survivor is going in to suffer and which killer is going in to cause that suffering, alongside perks to give survivors hope and dread. It's through us that the entity sees what's going on. We could take this further by analyzing how similar the in-game trials are to a video game. It all works like a game, because it is. Getting 5 gens working makes the gates open up because that's the rule set by the entity. Every single survivor isn't actually an engineer, they just have to pretend to work on generators to progress the game. It's also why survivors can get scratched, punched, hooked, impaled, and not die. Because the rules say they can't die like that. So with this theory, every killer player slugging the entire team is just making the entity stronger. Thank you so much for watching and making it to the end. If you have anything else to add to this list, please share your knowledge with the rest of us down in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one.